Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. Now that my obligatory informative videos are done for the day, you guys know what time it is. It's time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. And numerous people have linked me a video by Vince, aka V Shred, aka V Shrunk, talking about obviously biceps, right? Arm training. A whole 20 minute workout dedicated to just arms. I mean, you, you have to talk about having dedications to a small muscle group like arms to dedicate an entire workout to it. Uh, but I digress. Let me go ahead and put on my plus five hat of speechcraft. And let's talk about this. All right, guys. Um, I find some of this amusing. You guys know I find it amusing because Vince doesn't know even basic physiology. Um, he obviously is just a model that's been hired by this company that makes his channel uh, to discuss stuff. He's been accused of stealing stuff from Athlete X. He gets the physiology wrong. Um, but what I found was hilarious is, is a couple of things of how serious Vince takes bicep training. Because he doesn't take anything else seriously. Like he literally, when he discusses anything but biceps, he's so clueless when it comes to just basic exercises and how to perform them in their names and what range of motion to use, right? I mean, uh, you guys know what I'm talking about. And he has no chest, no legs. The guy's got biceps. But does anyone ever think about the fact that maybe his followers, that maybe that's the reason he doesn't have leg, he has almost no back development, has zero chest development for a guy who's been training for years, and he has little chicken legs. But he claims to train them and does whole workouts for them, right? But look at the difference in what he does in those versus something like his biceps. People say, well, what do you mean? He stands there on the biceps and he does everything with a full range of motion, right? And all this focus and he's, he's all focused on doing it correctly. He literally does the entire range of motion. He is doing stuff like going all the way down and locking the elbow and then coming up and even getting a little bit of shoulder extension and stuff happening, right? That's actually one of the functions of the bicep. Like he does all this stuff through complete ranges of motion. Everything was a full rep for his biceps. Before he got it really complicated and ridiculous, uh, but everything is a full range of motion for biceps. All right, th this should be part of the secret as to why the guy has biceps and nothing else. What does he do on bench press? He, he doesn't even know how to perform a bench press. He can't even do a basic bench press. He doesn't know how to teach it, doesn't know how to do it. And I don't even mean the bro gym crappy version where you're just loose and you flop around and maybe bounce it off your chest. Right, you know, bad benching. I'm not talking about real benching, serious benching. How about even the bad bro bench? He doesn't even know how to do that. The guy just flops on a bench, has that whole limp noodle thing and foot dancing, which, you know, he does the foot dancing on all his tricep movements too, which, you know, I explained to you guys in bench press videos, you can't do that. Uh, you shouldn't be able to move your feet on a bench press. Right? But once you unrack that bar, you should be locked in so tight that you can't move your feet even if you try. It shouldn't be physically possible if you set up correctly. And then he doesn't touch his chest. He just does partials, right? Like half reps at the top. And then he has no chest development. But he'll teach it like he's serious about training. It uses a really light weight on top of that. It's like so a lot of guys will, will do partials, you know, so they can silly add an extra 100 pounds on. Well, the guy has no weight on the bar anyways. I mean, I think he was doing something like 185 for half reps. Yeah, a lot of guys will do half reps so they can do 400 pounds, right? That's what they do. He just does a half reps with light weight. Incidentally, no chest. What's he doing in leg work? Because he doesn't know how to squat, doesn't know how to deadlift, and then he does a bunch of silly one-legged lunges and stuff. And even that stuff, the little bitty exercises he does, he generally doesn't even do those full range of motion. Doesn't squat full range of motion. Doesn't know how to even set up and get under a squat. Right? He can't teach the most basic of exercises, and he does them all as partials. He does pull-ups as partials. He doesn't even go all the way down. All those big muscles are, are small for him, for someone who's been training a couple of years. And he's clearly been training more than a couple of years. But he's got biceps. But do you see the difference? Everything is a full range of motion. You know what, if he did that on his bench press, he would actually have a chest. If he actually learned to squat with, a, with the same amount of focus he puts into a curl, he would have legs. All right, but he doesn't. It's something I noticed there. Now, also more incidentally, he starts talking about this particular version right here. If you grip the the dumbbell this way, it works the outer head, the long head. He actually has knows all these little things about bicep training. 
Is it any coincidence the guy has biceps? Because realistically, you can't even really do that. Um, that that's actually somewhat of a myth. You can't really take the short and the long head of the bicep and disproportionately train them. You can't. There's different amounts of maybe fibers in the, in the heads involving this, right? There is some slight difference with that shoulder extension happening. But not at the elbow level because the bicep, it, it, it's a single tendon inserting down here. There's no variation up here. There's two tendons. So as far as your shoulder movement goes, that can have a little bit of impact. You can't impact anything that involves at the elbow joint and have an actual difference uh, happening there in terms of through the bicep. Now you can get more brachialis. You get more brachialis. You get more radial brachialis down here, but you can't actually target those different heads to any appreciable degree by anything you do down there. Now, how much shoulder movement you do can, but the, the point there is that a little bit of shoulder movement generally adds more recruitment. You're just you're actually just leaving a little bit of, of some of the muscle fibers in one of the heads or just simply not being recruited if your, your shoulder stays stationary, right? Um, but it's not necessarily really targeting the rest of the muscle differently. So... He does all that and he gets so scientific about it, uh, supposedly, with all this terminology, but when it comes to big exercises, like serious exercises, he doesn't even get the names right. He doesn't know the difference between a Romanian deadlift and a stiff leg deadlift versus a conventional deadlift. He actually got just basic deadlift types completely mixed up in his deadlift video. He got the names wrong and it was hilarious. Um, so he does all of that stuff wrong but then he gets over to the biceps and he wants to get really serious about doing extra work for the, the long head extra work for the short head doing this triple drop set and he's like very specific about the range of motion you need to come all the way down and, and squeeze and he's like he makes sure that he's working the entire function of the bicep but then when he gets to a bench press it's just half reps at the top just flopping around on the bench like a noodle like flopping around on the bench Totally, totally different approach to anything he does. It's not biceps. When he gets to biceps, everything is, is serious, the exact opposite of what he does on everything else. Now, then he gets over to triceps. You know, one of the things I point out to people, um, look, trying to separate chest and triceps, that's, that's part of people's problem. Uh, if you get a big chest from doing lots of heavy pressing and dips and stuff, you're probably going to have decent-sized triceps. It's just unavoidable. Right? He puts all this focus into starting with a tricep extension and then going to a dip, right? Well, what have you heard people say? Even Scott Herman said that the other day. If you're starting a tricep workout off with a, a small movement, you're a moron. Like Scott Herman Fitness said that the other day. In a video, he made a whole video starting it off that way, talking about that, that you're literally a moron. Why? Because every single bit of evidence we have, both in the real world and anyone who doesn't lift or use drugs, and when we look at the science, pre-exhausting muscles causes inferior muscle growth. The big movement should always come first. So he did all the stuff where you do two different small tricep exercises, and he got all focused on continual tension. Well, continual tension is a bodybuilder, drug-using bodybuilder myth. It actually is not a reality as far as continual tension affecting muscle growth. Right, losing tension on each rep versus holding continual tension because of position doesn't affect muscle growth at all. It doesn't. It's been looked at, and, and no physiologist or anyone thinks it's even a factor. So it's not that because he focused on continual tension that'll get tricep growth. It, it literally doesn't matter. He would have got the same growth doing the same amount of work, which is using a version of the exercise that didn't use continual tension. It doesn't matter. So just because you chose to do that, like if you have. A, B, and C, and all three can work, and you choose B and say A is bad, that doesn't make A bad. You would have got the same results doing A instead of B, right? So that, that's the point made with the continual tension thing. It literally is a non-factor. It's the fact that you trained with progressive overload with enough volume and workload that made a muscle grow. It's not that you chose to maintain the continual tension part. Just a little side note, because he made such a big deal about that. So he did these small movements, and he goes to the dip. And incidentally, again... Why does the guy have no chest? Because he bothers to get around to a dip. He pre-exhausts first. So he's training triceps, and then he goes to the big movement. But then try to say, well, you're trying to get triceps and not chest. Well, really, you shouldn't have that mentality. If your chest is lagging like his is, you should be thinking, hey, man, how can I get more chest in everything I do? I need to be going all the way down on my bench. I need to be doing more dips. And if he really put a focus on weighted dips, he wouldn't have that problem either. 
But what does he do? Not only does he pre-exhaust it, when he does get to the dip, he does a half rep. He skips the bottom half of the, the, the movement and just does the top, the lockout. Make sure that he doesn't get any chest involved, right? He's trying to, so it's like he gets around to it. It's the same mistake he makes on bench press. He just does that on these bench dips also. He just skips the bottom completely. Now, before some people say, well, wouldn't the top work more tricep? No, just because, just because you work less chest doesn't mean more tricep gets worked because you're just simply doing less work. Because you're skipping the more difficult part of the range of motion, you're actually reducing total tension. So just because you're removing the chest more and doing something easier, because again, you don't, the chest doesn't have to help because it's easier, doesn't mean the triceps themselves are working harder. In fact, triceps do actually work at deeper stretches than just lockouts. So you're actually skipping some of the muscle fibers in the triceps in addition to most of the chest activation being removed. So it actually isn't even good for your triceps either. In the case of something like a dip, the full range of motion actually will maximize both muscles, which is not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. Uh, so again, the whole thing was just is ludicrous, but it does highlight why we see certain problems with him. The one muscle that he has that is really well developed, incidentally, is the only muscle that he seems to really focus on actually training through the full range of motion and actually doing all the functions of the muscle. Everything else, he just comes in and plays and half-asses it and acts like he's giving tutorials on it. All right, guys, so that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.